Welcome back friends, this is Salomon Jagwe again and I'm come, I'm back with another quick insight. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the, the Craft Animations Director and to see if this uh, data can be brought into the Unreal Engine because uh, I got a number of uh, questions on <laughs> one of the YouTube channels that I posted that does this work with within the Unreal Engine, okay? So I know the Unreal Engine already has its own like vehicle simulator where you can actually connect different parts of the vehicle, the wheels and all that. But I wanted to see, like, could you take the information or the data on these rigs and take it into the Unreal Engine and it actually works, okay? So if you're new to my channel, guys, I kindly ask that you spare a minute to subscribe, hit that notification bell after you subscribe. So you're alerted when I post a new video. And uh, it, for my uh, subscribers, steady subscribers, thank you so much for your support. And thank you so much to the uh, patrons. I truly appreciate your support, guys. Thanks again. And so Craft Director Studio is a quick, a really cool plugin that enables you to connect uh, your vehicle parts to a rig that then you can control using a joystick. You know, and I've shown you in a, a previous video the kind of joystick that I use, that, but you could use a, a, a mouse or even the keyboard itself. So I have this scene inside of uh, 3ds Max that I've already uh, connected. This track is from the Adventures of Mkoza and Nancha. And so then the environment that you look at, you're looking at in the background is the entire village. And my challenge was to see if I could animate this track driving through the village, delivering things, you know, to different parts of uh, the, the marketplace. And uh, this is the track that we made. But we needed to be able to control it, you know, so that it could convincingly, you know, carry the story of transporting the different vegetables from the village and driven by our grandfather, the grandfather of Nkoza and Nancha, the two kids. And this was modeled in Maya and brought into 3ds Max. Uh, you can see it was nicely textured. And you can see that I've already added the rig. This is the four wheeler extended and the four-wheeler extended offers you the ability to connect all these different parts uh, for the mesh. So for example, over here on the left-hand side, you can see the different parts of the rig that have been connected. And on the timeline down here, you can see the animation and you can see the shock absorbers as it bounces. And when it uh, when you press on the brake, which is the tr for me, I'm, I wired the trigger, the, uh, on the joystick to be that. So if I play back real quick, you can see the movement and the dynamics. That's really quick. And you can also see the wheels turning. I pump on the brakes and then the wheels turn and it goes in, it goes in that direction. Okay, so we want to be able to export this and send it to the Unreal Engine and then test it to see if this animation can actually go uh, completely together with the terrain because the idea again is to be able to take the vehicle conforming to this terrain and then build around it in the Unreal Engine so that you can create a, like a nice you know, environment that then, for example, for me, I'm trying to do it uh, to create a, like an episode that we can render real quick in the Unreal Engine, okay? And you can see the size of the, the mesh over here. All right, so what I do, I simply uh, go to File, Export, and then I export as an FBX file. So let's see, environment, and let's export. All right, and I'm, I'm baking the animation under the animation tab. Make sure you check animation, make sure you bake the animation, give it the length of uh, frames that you want it to um, bake. And deformations, I have car filters, and I also have the FBX file format uh, set to FBX 2011, okay? And when you're ready, we can export, say, click OK. Uh, it doesn't take very long, I mean, depending on how big your environment is. For my environment, this test that we're doing, it's uh, not that big. Now, you notice that uh, there are some buildings missing. <laughs> I had to take out some of the buildings just to speed up the process so I can demonstrate in this uh, tutorial. And so the environment is much bigger than what you see. There are huts and 
their banana plantations and all that. But we wanted to, I wanted to see if the data itself first comes in before I populate the entire environment with all the different parts of the environment. So, okay, let's go to the Unreal Engine. And we have a, a new level here. I've created a folder called vehicles. And I already have the, I've enabled uh, a number of plugins in here, but what we really want to use is just uh, FBX import. And so I right click in the folder, I click on import. And then in here, I go to the folder where I have my animation, click on open. And then under here, by default, this might be already collapsed, but you wanna make sure that those are checked and also expand this uh, show advanced and make sure you import morph targets and the way you see it right here. Same thing all the way down, okay? And then we're gonna click import all. And again, depending on the speed of your machine, uh, it might take a long time, might take a, just a short while. This is, it's importing one of 11. And uh, in the interest of time, I'm probably not gonna show the entire process of going from one to 11 but I'll pick up when it's about to be complete. So, all right guys, so the import has succeeded and initially it doesn't put it in the uh, in the scene right away. And so I just close these uh, alerts that just popped up. And as you can see, all the meshes that make up the environment have been imported, right? And they're highlighted. So before you click anywhere else, you can actually drag and drop it right here in the viewport, just like that. Let's find a central place, let's release. And before I deselect again, I want to right click and I want to move this to a new folder and I'll call it the set, okay? That way I can exp uh, minimize that and I can turn it on and off, which is very, very helpful, all right? Now I can turn off the floor and moment of truth. All right, so we have the mesh in here, right? And so it brought in the mesh, but I also noticed that it also brought in the animation. So it converted, when it brought in the conversion, the conversion process was able to create that mesh, the skeletal mesh, as well as the animation sequence and the physics asset. So, which is really cool. So this guy right here, I wanna turn off. So he's gonna be our reference because we wanna bring in the animation program exactly in the same place, okay? So we deselect everything else and you just select the animation one, animation sequence, and we bring it and drop it right there. Hold on. So I need to, it's bringing in the something else. Let me double click on this. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. So as you can see, the animation has come in and you can see the track animated. So it is success. <laughs> I have to figure out the, why the ground plane is disappearing, but as you can tell, it's definitely brought in the animation and the wheels, the reaction time, the turning. So this, the rig itself, we have to hide all those little components, but clearly it is indeed possible to bring in a craft animation sequence and use it in the Unreal Engine. <laughs> there goes the track. So I am very happy. This is actually was a good test for me because now I know I can do uh, make that uh, track go up and down the hills of this hour of the environment here and go up, drive, and I can be able to attach the characters in here and be able to use it in the Unreal Engine. So I hope this was insightful, guys, and uh, it's encouraging. I cannot honestly say that yes. The animation can indeed be brought into the Unreal Engine and used as an example. So we'll, we'll close this. And for here, let me see if I can hide this. And so that's what I think what happened. Let me drop in the animation. Right there. And let's try to position it exactly where the other track is. Okay. 
and the textures we can fix you know it comes in looking a little shiny those are quick things that we can fix but knowing that the animation is here so this animation this vehicle that I've, I've dropped in from here I can now go over here and look for the skeletal mesh here the skeletal mesh and then look for update animation in viewport update animation in the editor boom <laughs> so there it is guys the animation has been imported it's on the track and everything what's left is simply to uh, let me turn off the animation first so these little components in here those are texture based but now i know to hide them so that i can uh, separate the rig from the actual vehicle but clearly if i go back and turn on where is the set set is there so this part right here is what was turned off and so if i bring if i turn on this track let me make sure my track is selected but if I enable this track right here and then I move my track, the one that has the animation, and there are other ways to do it, of course, but I just wanted to see if I can just line it up. And that's exactly in the same position as the track is. Exactly in the same position. Now I can turn this off. And then if I go back and enable update, yes. So that is exactly where it's it's conforming to the exact part of the terrain, which is very, very good. And I think I may actually have to maybe just lower it because you can see how the terrain is more following. It's following that little guy right there. So that is cool, guys. All right, so I hope uh, <laughs> this helps you as you're trying to figure out if you can use a craft animation director data inside of the Android engine. The answer is uh, resounding yes, you can. There we go. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, see you next time with another, oops. I didn't mean to do that. See you next time with another insight and another tutorial. Uh, today we were talking about uh, the Craft Animations Director plugin, uh, being able to use it together with the Unreal Engine and testing it with a custom vehicle that I was created for our Adventures of Nkosa and Nancha. So you could be, you can create vehicles for your own short film or series and have the confidence that you can actually bring in that information or in that data in here and use it so see you next time please stay safe don't give up on your dream as always much love bye for now